As we are gearing up for the new release of Godzilla X Kong, the new empire in the upcoming year, the excitement over Godzilla has bubbled over. Godzilla has been a fan favorite character for many years. The colossal beast has dominated the silver screen and theaters as it plagued the streets of Japan and other tropical destinations. It has rivalries with iconic beasts such as King Kong, Mothra, Mecha Godzilla, Rodan, and King Ghidorah. But in today's video, we are going to take a look at one of the most iconic enemies of Godzilla, who has given viewers a lot of memorable moments. It is time to meet Space Godzilla, the menace from outer space. So just like the name suggests, Space Godzilla is like an evil version of Godzilla from space with powers that can negate Godzilla's fearsome combat abilities. So buckle up viewers, because this is going to be one heck of a ride as we take a deep dive into the marvelous world of Space Godzilla. But before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Tracing the origins of Space Godzilla So how did this disastrous creature arrive in the world of Godzilla? What is the origin of this ferocious beast? To answer these questions, we will have to take a look into the mysterious origins of Space Godzilla, the greatest opponent of Godzilla in the Haisi series of films. Space Godzilla made its first appearance in the 1994 Toho Godzilla film, which was titled Godzilla vs. Space Godzilla. Quite a straightforward title, is it not? In the movie, the space monster's origin is hypothesized hypothesized by the human characters. Their theory was that the DNA of Godzilla somehow made its way to space, where after being swallowed into a black hole, it underwent rapid evolution and mutated into a partial crystalline organism. This partially crystalline organism then came out of a white hole, but the human characters were not sure how exactly the DNA of Godzilla made its way into space. This is where things start to get a bit tricky. One of the possibilities that were put forward was, in 1989 after the clone of Godzilla Biolante, who was made with the DNA of Godzilla, disintegrated into tiny spores in space. Another possibility was that in 19 93, Mothra carried some of Godzilla's DNA, which got on her wings during her battle with him, into space. In the Trend Masters Godzilla Wars toy line, when Space Godzilla was introduced, they made a change to the Biolante origin theory. Instead of the genetic material being mutated by the white and black holes, they theorized that the DNA evolved after undergoing a fusion with the crystalline life form that already existed, which made Space Godzilla a mixture of this alien life form and Godzilla. The Menacing Saga of Space Godzilla Now, what is the story behind this dangerous menace? Well, in the movie Godzilla vs. Space Godzilla, Space Godzilla was first seen flying through space to get to Earth. But, on his way, he took out a NASA space station that was manned. Talk about making a dramatic entrance, right? For his debut battle, Space Godzilla battled with another character that made its first appearance in this movie. The character is none other than Mobile Operations Godzilla, Universal Expert Robo. Aerotype, or Mogera for short. Space Godzilla handed the Mecha his defeat. After his easily won battle, Space Godzilla touched base on Bass Island, which could be translated as Birth Island, which was home of Godzilla and Little Godzilla. He started attacking Little Godzilla, but Godzilla arrived to his rescue. This shows how evil Space Godzilla is. I mean, who would attack? a cutie such as little Godzilla in an effort to defeat your Earthling counterpart. One might think that Godzilla would unleash chaos and defeat Space Godzilla, but the reality was different. Space Godzilla brought his awesome telekinetic powers to take out Godzilla, and he encased little Godzilla in crystals which trapped him. After his apparent victory, Space Godzilla flew across Japan and made his fortress in Fukuoka, and after an upsetting loss, Mogera arrived at Fukuoka to redeem itself, but was handed another loss by none other than Space Godzilla. It must have been humiliating to receive a loss twice in quick succession like that, so it made sense for Mogera to team up with Godzilla when he arrived at the scene. Mogera split into Land Mogera and Star Falcon for a better chance at victory. Land Mogera dug into the land beneath the Fukuoka Tower, which was Space Godzilla's stronghold. This disrupted the foundations of the structure, which made it easier for Godzilla to destroy the tower above ground. It increased Godzilla's chances of winning, and Mogera Mogera took out the crystals on top of Space Godzilla using its spiral grenades, which left him in a critically weakened condition. Well, losing your crystals would anger anyone. 
So, Space Godzilla took his anger out by destroying one of the arms of Mogera, impaling it, using his tail, and throwing it into a building that was nearby. But Akira Yuki bravely tried to maneuver the Mecha back into battle. The Mecha was successful in knocking down Space Godzilla after colliding with it, but the damage that Mogera sustained in the battle was too much to control accurately, and this resulted in Mogera crashing into a bunch of buildings where it was finally disabled. Godzilla took the chance to use his red coloured spiral rays to blast the celestial clone multiple times. Mogera somehow ended up in the line of fire and finally got destroyed in the process. Space Godzilla could not handle the punishment that Godzilla put him through and disintegrated into spores made out of light that rose up into space after a week end of rule. Well apart from this story, Space Godzilla has also made an appearance on Godzilla Island. During episode 1 to 5, Exilian Zagreth attacked Godzilla Island. So Space Godzilla was released into the attack when Tor Rema attacked the ship. Space Godzilla started to destroy the command center with the help of his rays when Godzilla arrived to battle his clone. But both the colossal beasts were a match for each other and could not gain the upper hand until Torema instructed Godzilla to take out the crystal on top of his Space Godzilla's shoulder. They're all after his crystals. Way too much, aren't they? Godzilla followed the instructions to blow up the crystals using his atomic ray. The combo attack of Godzilla's Torema's ship rays eventually took out Space Godzilla. But Space Space Godzilla did not give up, and he tried to possess Godzilla in the form of a ghost, which ended up being a massive failure. So, Space Godzilla made another appearance on Godzilla Island. This time, he was in a new and improved physical form, which is called the Super Special Space Godzilla, High Grade Type 2. Sounds fancy, doesn't it? But even this more powerful form did not help him defeat Godzilla, as the Monster King obliterated his left shoulder crystal and forced him to retreat into space to lick his wounds. World Destroying Powers and Abilities of Space Godzilla Now, it is time to take a look at the fearsome powers of Space Godzilla that make him one of the greatest enemies of Godzilla. As someone who took out Godzilla with ease, Space Godzilla has a lot of tricks up his sleeve. After all, he did manage to push Godzilla to the edge, so much so that Godzilla had to team up with Mogera just to try to defeat him. Space Godzilla's physical strength is no joke, as is seen in his fight with Mogera, where he threw the mecha around easily using his tail technique, which is known as the Tail Smasher, or Tail Smash for short. He was even able to battle Godzilla in close quarters efficiently despite his heavy build and short arms. Talking about his durability, Space Godzilla has superior regenerative capabilities. He is able to shrug off attacks in the form of rays, blasts, and beams from Godzilla and Mogera with ease, but his regeneration does not extend to his crystals, which are an apparent weakness. Adding to his durability and increasing his defensive ability in the presence of the photoreactive shield, which is a shield that looks like crystal, which Space Godzilla is able to generate at will to reflect or dissipate beams of energy. He uses this ability to defend against the atomic breath of Godzilla when he attacked Fukuoka Tower. Now, let us move on to his offensive capabilities. Space Godzilla has a few forms of telekinesis. The first one is Gravity Tornado, or Gravity Tornado, which gives him the ability to carry and transport other kaiju via air. Godzilla was unable to free himself from the strong psychic power even though Space Godzilla could not move objects at high speed. The next form of telekinesis that Space Godzilla possesses is geokinesis, which enables him to create huge crystals from the ground that towers over others. This allows him to manipulate the ground around him. He can also use his telekinesis to push outward in every direction. It kind of seems similar to Pain's ability in Naruto Shippuden. Space Godzilla is seen using this ability in Godzilla Save the Earth, which created a huge shockwave. Space Godzilla also had the ability to control energy freely. The dangerous part of this ability is that he can control how his corona beams travel, which includes their speed and direction. It's kind of like how Darkseid's Omega beams go after its targets. The corona beams are dangerous even without this fearsome ability as they dig into targets with armor before exploding. The beam has a yellowish-orange color and looks like lightning in appearance with a bluish-white color colored curved tip. There's also a power called Space Claw, which lets Space Godzilla transmit energy through touch. This increases his overall close combat capability. He can also absorb energy from his surroundings and use it along with his geokinesis to generate huge structures made of crystals that can be thrown at his enemies. This ability, where he throws the crystals at his enemies, is known as Homing Ghost. I know you might be thinking, why does an ability that is basically throwing rocks at someone have such a fancy name? Well, the 
attack is super hard to dodge due to the sheer quantity of crystals that are propelled. Now, that's a bit cool, isn't it? Space Godzilla also possesses an aura. You heard it right. The monster from space has an aura. And it is not the distinctive feel that he gives off, but something like an electromagnetic pulse that can take out electronics like missiles and other equipment, even military-grade ones. Space Godzilla was seen using a similar ability in his fight with Mogera on his way to Earth. This ability is known as a photon hurricane, in which he emits an electromagnetic wave in the shape of a ring. Comparing Space Godzilla to Monsterverse Godzilla We have already seen how powerful Space Godzilla, the cosmic clone of Godzilla is, in the world of colossal kaijus. But how would he fare when he is put in a fight against the Monster vs. Godzilla? Let us find out the answer to that question. The Monster vs. Godzilla is a homogenous monster that has great strength, durability, and regenerative capabilities that is created by legendary pictures and is one of the two protagonists of the Monsterverse. Monsterverse Godzilla first appeared in the 2014 film Godzilla and possesses the iconic atomic breath, a devastating weapon in his arsenal that can emit a powerful concentrated beam of atomic energy. In the 2019 sequel titled Godzilla King of the Monsters, we see this monsterverse Godzilla encountering several other titans such as Rodan, Mothra and Ghidorah. It was such a shame that Space Godzilla could not make an appearance in this monsterverse. It would be amazing to see a confrontation between Space Godzilla and the monster Godzilla. Given the fact that they have such diverse abilities, Space Godzilla's ability to manipulate energy and high defense might give him an advantage over Monsterverse Godzilla. On the other hand, Monsterverse Godzilla's ability to absorb energy and project it might make Space Godzilla's energy manipulation useless in front of the Monsterverse Godzilla. The physical power and atomic breath of Monsterverse Godzilla are great weapons that could tip the battle in his favor. But since all of this is just speculation at this point, we cannot do anything but hope to see such an epic battle take place between them in the future. mind-blowing appearance of Space Godzilla in other forms of media. So Space Godzilla made a memorable appearance in the film Godzilla vs. Space Godzilla. But now let us take a look at the mind-blowing appearances that he has made in other forms of media. Apart from the television series Godzilla Island, where Space Godzilla made a brief appearance, he has also been featured in multiple video games such as Godzilla Trading Battle, Godzilla Save the Earth, Godzilla Kaiju no Daishingeki, Godzilla the Game, Godzilla Defense Force, and Godzilla Unleashed. He has also made an appearance as a boss in Godzilla Unleashed Double Smash. Other than this, Space Godzilla has also made appearances in a few comic books. The first one that comes to mind is Godzilla vs. Space Godzilla in the 1994 film of the same name that we have unraveled in this video was actually the manga adaption. Other comic books that feature him are Godzilla in Hell, Godzilla Ongoing, Godzilla Rule of the Earth and Godzilla The Half Century War. Marvelous Verdict. And with that, we have come to the end of another marvelous video, folks. From his killer powers to his absolute shield, we have taken a look at how powerful Space Godzilla is and why he is a worthy adversary to Godzilla. We have explored several battles of the space monster and traced the ambiguous origin of this fearsome foe. As we conclude the video, we hope that Space Godzilla makes another appearance in mainstream media, especially with a new Godzilla movie on the horizon. He might be an evil beast that hurt little Godzilla, but he is one powerful monster capable of giving Godzilla a run for his money. So what do you think about Space Godzilla? Let us know your thoughts in the comments down below. And if you like this video, do not forget to hit that like button and subscribe on your way out. Until next time guys, keep your curiosities aroused.